Are you ready and super psyched? Ready. Let's okay. go. All right, let's do this. Episode 162. I almost, I snapped and like missed my finger. <laughs> it was weird. It's like when you like bite down hard on your cheek and you're like, man, how hard do I actually chew? Yeah. Yes. They're like, if you like don't get the fork tying out of the way fast enough and you actually only bite the fork, you're like, oh my gosh, I think I almost just died. What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. That's me, Ben. I'm here. I made it. I'm the special guest. I, uh, you know, I've got a lot to say today. Do, you do. You know it. I you am, know I am, it. I am ready. As and, ever. And, as the host of the show, I'm so excited to interview you yes. about all of the topics mm-hmm. that you have brought forth. Thank you. All the new projects that you're working on, your upcoming films. Congratulations, yeah. by the way, yeah. being cast as an extra yes. in that one movie where you'll be a tree in the background no one will be able to do it like you on on that note not that i'm going to be an extra in anything but we were just we've everyone in the office is like in the process of watching the show the white lotus on hbo right now yep it is um an extremely uncomfortable and really also like kind of funny at the same time show largely about like white privilege and stuff so it's especially uncomfortable if you're white (laughs) um (laughs) which we are uh (laughs) but anyway it's very interesting commentary not the point. The point is that um, when they filmed the first season, it was at this um, resort in Hawaii and it was during COVID. So in order to film it, they had to like, you know, basically be on lockdown. So HBO um, rented out the entire resort for the entire time they were filming it, which was like several months. Yes. Um, and so like everyone was basically just stuck on the island, like the entire cast and crew and stuff. So they didn't have like tons of extras. So like a lot of the people you see in the show are like the actual hotel employees who otherwise just work there. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. like a lot of the extras are just like the crew because they didn't have room for extra people (laughs) right so it's just like literally like yeah so it's very interesting to me because i bet it's the type of show that if you were to go through with a fine tooth comb (laughs) you would start to realize how frequently you're actually seeing like the same people in the backgrounds of all the shots yes but that's actually that works out really well because like that's sort of how resorts are like you see the same people over and over it's very true it's very true it definitely becomes one of those things where it's like yeah you're you're like you arrive and it's kind of even like the way the show shoots itself. Like they all arrive with each other on a boat. Right. And then like, you know, throughout the rest of their time there, they're constantly all like sort of finding their way to dinner, you know, at the same time. And they're all eating like three tables away from one another. And it's like, that is, that is what, that is kind of how it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, (laughs) I'm like, I'm watching and I'm like, is, is, is this how it would be though? Like all these people have in common is that they rode a boat together like once a few days ago. Like, would that be enough to strike up a conversation? And I'm like, like I voiced that out loud. Like my wife, Beth was like, absolutely. That's I would talk to all those people again. I'd be like, Oh yeah, we saw you on the boat. How are you? And I'd be like, yes, you would do that. You're right. It is realistic. It is 100. Yeah. You, you even said with Beth specifically. And it's (laughs) like, I know like Beth, Beth is like so good about having like the most tenuous of like reasons to have like an intro, but it's like, boom, I did it. And I'm like, like, I will like watch in awe and be like, you were so good. So good at that. And just like immediately being like, Hey, we have this one small thing in common and that is enough. And it's like, it's an interesting barrier that I can like watch her like break. Yeah. Because for one, like when you and I go to, um, like, conferences or whatever where we're doing like youtube related stuff very frequently you'll see people like across the room that you recognize from their work online and like you're like you definitely have that like wall up of like well i don't want to go and like you know just just like introduce myself yeah how how could i do that like like what if it was uncomfortable or what like what if i bothered them or something and it's like Beth has always been the best at being with us for this exact thing because yeah. she's so great at just going up for me and like, hey, yeah, like you know, I love watching your stuff, right? And it's like, yeah, wow, this was so, and and they're and they're just like happy to talk, right? And everything's yeah. fine. Huh. Well, I overthought what it. What do you know? I overthought it. How about that? What do you um, know? No, it's interesting though because I, I I read the same thing because I was very curious. Like, it's one of those shows that you watch it and then you almost want like director's commentary or like breakdowns or something. Like, oh my gosh, like, what didn't you see? Massive pet peeve about HBO max and the white lotus is that before every episode starts it'll pop up with a screen that says stay tuned after the episode for insight about the show yes and then as soon as the credit starts rolling this little counter will appear to be like next episode in 10 seconds and like 
Like we have tried to skip the counter, you know, like on several occasions. And it's like, I don't know how to get off the counter. Oh, there's right. Not like, yeah. Like they, they assume you want to play the next episode. Yeah. And it's just like, like there's no, there's no button for like dismiss this or anything. Right. Or if it is like any, it's like any button I've tried to push just, it's like the, the counter is there and it's like at 10, we will skip to the next episode or you can press almost any button on the remote and we'll just press the button now and you can go to the next episode. But it's like the just I want I actually want to see the commentary from the people in the show because I feel like probably a lot's going over my head. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. Yeah it, it, yeah, it feels like the type of thing where you could almost watch it twice and understand it more the second time because you have like a better idea of like what all is going on and it is it's yeah. written um, in such a way, like I, I was describing this to Alice where it's like so frequently you will have like, it's not like happenstance type situations where like a character might find themselves in a certain situation. It's like they establish it, every single character, like right away, like this is who they are. This is what imp- is important to them. And then you can like watch the lines like intersect throughout the story. And it's like, yes, like they didn't just set this up like in this episode and be like, ah, yes, I've always aspired to being a pianist or something. It's like basically the first thing you ever knew about this character is that they wanted to make a career in making music. And it's right. like, then like when the opportunity arises, it's like, of course, that's what they want to do. Right. Like, you know, it's like the, like they, they lay the groundwork so perfectly so early and then just like let it like permeate and the uh, like opportunities arise as they will. And it's like, yeah, okay. it's like it's it's clearly like the whole show was thought out ahead of time and then. Like each character was enormously developed and then they wrote them. Yes. And like you can you can like really tell the whole story was there from the beginning because they were like able to they're able to like foreshadow so much stuff all the way all the way through. Yeah. So yeah. definitely. I mean, like, like we said, a little bit of like an uncomfortable show to watch at times. Yes. Like, I mean, just for a variety of reasons, like they they'll even like uh, they'll, they'll like w- like have a character who's like having like a bad take but like they're they're delivering it in such a way that it's like like i can i i can like hear somebody i know saying the same sentence right it's like it's like that's that's too close like it's like yeah yeah yeah. it it is so the show yeah it does such a good job of making you uncomfortable with everyone because you're right like characters will like deliver bad takes and then like the person on the other side of the conversation you would expect to correct them will correct them in like the worst way possible. Yes. And then you'll yeah. be like, well, you're not likable either. Yeah. Just, yeah. just about everybody in the show is unlikable. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so somehow it's the one show of those shows is still likable. <laughs> exactly. It's a very weird phenomenon. It's a very phenomenon. There you go. Bingo. Okay. If you want a less uncomfortable show to watch, that is also completely well thought out and um, crazy. I'm going to give you my other totally random wick of the peak here, Ben. Okay. Okay. So, um, Luke every now and then will fall into wanting to watch the show and well, you know, my kids cycle through different shows like on Disney Plus they want to watch. Naturally, and so yeah. sometimes it's like on a, you know, uh the the base level, it's at the baseline is a show called Mickey and the Roadster Racers. Yeah. This yeah. is the most like this is acceptable Mickey Mouse, you know, mini goofy daisy everyone it's like this is the most baseline show to me okay it is like okay this is this is tolerable i can i can have this on it's not gonna like bother me if you go to like if you take a step down to mickey mouse clubhouse it's like no can't do it no No. good at all terrible um but that one that one that one takes the place a lot if we're like bluey it's like bravo bravo kids great choice Great choice. Like Everyone very, loves Bluey. Bluey's very highbrow. Bluey, <laughs> Bluey to me is undergoing this thing right now where I feel like it's in season three or season three just came out and suddenly it seems like the word is out. Like for, for, uh, for the first two seasons, uh, like all the parents knew that like, yeah, okay, I love, uh, this is a good show for my kids, but now it's like, People without kids are starting to like get get the word on Bluey. No and way! It's like, so yeah. like like, the, like you have people out there who are just like we just watch. This is Bluey. just good. This is, this just, is just, just good. Good television. It's just good television. Anyway, neither of those are the recommendation. The show they're into right now is the most random off the wall show. Like I, I, it's called The Legend of the Three Caballeros. Are you familiar with the Three Caballeros? Uh, I only know <laughs> them from like 
some merchandise at Disney World. Yes, yes. Exactly my relationship prior to this show. Okay. Like, I have seen it. So if you don't know, the three caballeros are Donald Duck and his two um, like musical friends, Jose and Penchito. Okay. And they are from a 1945 Disney animated movie that I have not seen. Okay. And I like all I've ever, all I know about them is that sometimes I see those two with Donald and I'm like, I feel like your characters I should know, but I don't. Okay. And like they even like there, did you know there's a ride at Disney world for the three caballeros? I did not. Yeah. Know that. Because it's like almost because yeah, it is inside the pyramid in oh Epcot. i didn't know that exactly. i didn't know that i didn't now that you say it i do remember okay yeah so it's I don't like i've ever been on it though. i've never been on it either which is crazy because i love going in there i know but like yeah. you it is like the most hidden ride ever because it's like about characters you're probably not familiar with sure and it's inside of a building you might not even know you're allowed to go in like the first few times i went to epcot i didn't know you could go in the pyramid i thought oh, it was just decoration right, you know? right, right. It's, it's like, like it's like that's very beautiful like yeah. it represents the area that we're in yeah however, it's like okay like, we're in me- yeah this is yep. this is cool Right, but like it's probably a staff break room. Yeah, and then it's like it's not. It's, yeah, so it's you need to know that <laughs> go to go to Mexico, then go in the pyramid, and then you got to get past the gift shop area, past the restaurant, and then like in the back corner, you can get on the ride for the three caballeros okay. if you even know who they are. Um, which maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you're just like everyone knows the caballeros, Jay. Okay. It, anyway, right. Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say. I mean, this is it's it's the classic like trivia thing. It's like trivia is only hard if you don't know the answer. Yeah. And then if you do know the answer, it's very easy. Yeah. This would be like, you know, I feel like the Emperor's New Groove can almost fall into a similar category where like yeah. it's not the most well-known Disney movie. Yeah. Like it's sort of like overlooked for a lot of reasons. I actually feel like once upon a time we made a pretty good video about like why it's the most like underrated Disney movie of all time. Because it is. <laughs> um, however, similar situation. I feel like, you know, it's like if you know the Emperor's New Groove, then it's like, yeah. It's a great movie. I love it. But like, if you've never seen it and you're like one of those people, then it's like, it does feel obscure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway. So as far as I can tell, the original 1945 movie, The Three Caballeros, is about Donald and his two companions and they go on some sort of, it's like a musical, like they're a band. Okay. Basically. And sure enough, anytime they show up in any like the kids shows, it'll be like, oh yeah, Donald's meeting up with his friends, The Caballeros. And it's like, they're always putting on a concert or something. Like they're singing. Okay. That's their shtick or whatever. So this show came out in 2018 and it basically, as far as I could tell, just dropped that altogether. It was just like, okay, yes, Donald. Yes. The other two, Jose and Panchito, everything else different, like okay. completely different take. It's like, we're going to, these are vaguely familiar characters and that's it. Other than Donald is still like angry and the duck with no luck or whatever. Okay. But it is, I mean, like you'll watch the show and it is unbelievable unbelievable to me that one, it's a kid's show that has the level of continuity it does. Okay. And the level that the show works with the amount of like complete crazy random stuff happening in the show. Okay. Okay. So the basic setup is the three cabios are not a band. They're like legendary warriors and like some 500 years ago, the there was, you know, ancestors who look exactly like the modern day counterparts of them. Okay. And there were these great warriors and they locked away this great evil. And now years later, Donald is in it starts on Donald's birthday where he is inheriting the home of his ancestor where all the caballeros like relics are. But it's just regular Donald Duck. He has no idea. He's just like, you know, some greedy, bad tempered duck. Right. The other two show up as well. Their next door neighbor is like the president of this university. Um, and he's like, you know, the bad guy and he's like extremely rich and, you know, he's trying to unlock the great evil that was locked away long ago. Okay. So anyway, that's the basic setup. The Caballeros live right next door to the main villain <laughs> and by the next door, I mean, his house is a horseshoe shape and they live inside the horseshoe. Oh so my he, gosh. Not even next door. <laughs> not inside. even next door. Yeah. yeah. The inside neighbors. <laughs> the inside neighbors. And then here's the, they get inside the house and they find this book and they open it up and out pops this like warrior princess goddess girl, Zandra, who's now just part of the team too. Love She's a human in this world of otherwise anthropomorphic animals. Perfect. Exactly. Why not? And every episode they travel around the world to um, different like unexplained things like Easter Island or Stonehenge or something like that. Okay. The pyramids. And like it turns out all those things are related in that they're gateways to other worlds and they have to go fight whatever. But it's just like one episode you're like in like uh, you're, you're just all over the place and it's so random. But like 
it is the continuity is so good and like the villains are hilarious and all the characters are hilarious and like Every time they watch it, I'm like, this is this like no one is appreciating the show in this room, but it is so fun. I can't believe no one's talked about it. Like I, as I looked it up. I was like, is there a second season of this? Because they set it up at the end and it's like apparently it came out. They made it and they released it in like foreign markets and then like it slowly made its way to Disney. But it was like during the pandemic and then it got put on like quietly on Disney Plus. So maybe you've seen it, but interesting. Yeah, I. But yeah, I want to recommend if you have kids, put on The Legend of the Three Caballeros because it is just so good and hilarious and like th- very funny. And I don't know. Yeah, I you know, well, it's very interesting <clears throat> because I feel like I I always wonder nonstop when you hear stories like this if it's like like it used to be the case, for example, that like with Disney sequels, like typically what you had was like a direct to VHS, direct to DVD situation where you would allow the like sort of up and coming animators, yeah. the opportunity to like work on something with extremely well-known characters in a way that like is pretty marketable, but like definitely still not like going to theaters type of situation. Yeah. But no doubt, like you're still dealing with like very talented people who probably go on to be like heads or leads of otherwise like very successful ventures right. down the line. But like what you're watching is like their humble beginnings. Yeah, their training. Yeah. Right. And so like I'm I'm deadly curious with a situation like this, if you've got like a group of writers or a writer or, you know, like someone who's kind of got like a vision for the show and it's sort of like this is like in their mind, their big break. Like somebody was like yeah, there's these three characters. They're going to let you, like, free reign. You know, it needs yeah, to be... Like, like, reinvent them. Children's friendly, but, like, you know, have fun with it. Just, like, whatever you see fit, give it a shot. Like, this is your... This this is, like, your trial run. And what you end up with is probably, like... Like, what I really want to know is whether or not the director, writer, you know, creative director of, of this show, if it's almost, like, worth, like, subscribing to, like, their page. You know, like, yeah, like, like, are they gonna, yeah, they're gonna go do bigger, better things. Yeah, or like, something? like, yeah. is it is it possible that this is just someone who has like a like an extraordinary knack for putting together like like a cohesive story inside of like otherwise chaos? Who can like write extremely elaborate stuff? And it's like like what the the palette they were given for this particular project was these you know yeah. three uh you know child or children's story ducks yeah you know and it's like what what do you do with that you know it's like i'm, I'm gonna make it as good as i possibly can they're gonna have swords they're gonna fight stuff they're gonna have armor it's gonna be awesome right so yeah. it's, it's they're gonna fight gods they're gonna ha- have a luau with the e- the easter island heads they're gonna go to the pyramids and it turns out they're rocket ships and there's an army of robots on the moon and you're like is this all the same show and it's like yeah Yep. Yeah, right. all completely normal. This is all within the realm of the Caballeros. Now this is it. This is it. This just works. Yeah, we're gonna go to Hades. You're gonna go to the Labyrinth with the Minotaur. It's like you're all over the place. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah. it, it, I think it's interesting because, like, I remember um, when the like uh, Infinity War and Endgame, and I think it was Winter Soldier before that, are all directed, uh, like within the MCU, are all directed by. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm blinking on their names. Who were the, the, there's like two. Oh, the bro- Russo brothers? The Russo brothers, yeah. yes. <clears throat> and, you know, so like the Russo brothers show up and like for the longest time, Winter Soldier is like largely considered like, you know, the most um, like critically acclaimed MCU movie. And right. then like the Russo brothers are then like brought back to do like the big capstone, like the finale of all finales to this massive franchise. And you're yeah. like, well, like what were they <clears throat> doing before this? And it's like, they were doing like the TV show community. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's one of those things where like after I saw Infinity War and Endgame, it's like, well, now I need to go watch community. You gotta figure like, this out. Like, yeah. Because yeah, this it's the exact same situation. It's like, what was all the fuss about? Like, what was it that like, you know, um, Kevin Feige or like these big studio heads at Marvel were like, hey, this is like basically, you know, the 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 biggest piece of media we've been able to drop ever we've been yeah. building for it for 10 years nothing's ever been done like this these guys are our guys these are our guys you know it's like it's i mean it, it's um it's amazing now that you've seen like the final outcome of it it's like wow like well done you know very cool yeah. very well executed all the rest um but you know beforehand it's like it it, it would be you you would see like their their previous like works and it would be it would be the type of thing where it's like okay interesting 
curious to see like where this goes. Yeah. Um, like, okay, the guys from Community Endgame. I got it. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, similarly, like, you know, I've, I've had this exact same thought before, uh, like obviously we talk about name of the wind all the time, of course. Um, and like one of the, one of the most mind blowing aspects of it that like, like for the most part, when I'm listening to the books, like I am like, it's like my like escapism. It's like where I can go. I can like, I can like walk around the world of the four corners of the four corners with both and everything. Uh, but the only thing that really takes me out of universe is like how utterly just like gobsmacked I am that. Patrick Rothfuss was like not much older than I am currently when he wrote his first book, The Name of the Wind. Right. You know, and it's like, how? How? Right. How is this your first try? Like, <laughs> this is so elaborate and right. like careful. And, you know, it's like you you would think that what you're dealing with is like, I don't know, you know, like a like a seasoned author who who has like experience upon experience and like wins and failures and like you know trial error all the rest and it's like no first try first try here we go but it's like it sounds first try because like this is your first like novel but almost certainly he i mean he obviously went to college for this exact thing sure and like like studied literature and has read tons of fantasy and done like it sounds like if i had to guess mountains of hours of like D and D or something and storytelling, things like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, I mean, this, this is not like to suggest a scenario where this is just someone who like went and picked up a pen one day and like, you like totally knocked it out of the park. But, yeah. um, you know, it, it certainly is, is still impressive that like the first major published work oh, that, sure. that he has happens to be, is like so tight and so well thought out. Right. And so like, you wonder when you look at something like that, like, uh, I've always thought about like John Williams, for example, the composer, Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> like, like in the early days of, um, you know, like, like star Wars being created. It's like at the time, was it like a get, you know, to get John Williams or right. like, or, or did that launch him? Or did that launch him? But then, like, you know, you look at the rest of his career, and it's like every single time you have a score that's like incredible, it's like, it's like, who did this one? John Williams. Again. Again. Okay. okay. How is he that good? Yeah. How, and did they know he was that good from the beginning? Is he that good because he had this like incredible springboard that gave him the confidence to believe he could be that good? Um, mm, I think, yeah, I don't know. My guess is he was that good. And, yeah, he, I don't know. I don't know if that was his first thing right. or not. Well, let's look up. Let's look up who directed or wrote. Um, let's see who wrote the Legend of the Three Kaba. We're watching Heroes. it in real time, people. Watching it in go. real time. Directed by Matt Danner. Okay. What else has Matt Danner done? Let's find out. Let's find out. Nominated for an Annie Award for his character design work on Xiaolin Showdown. Do you remember that show? Sort of. I do remember it. And surprise and unsurprisingly, it is another kids show with unbelievable like continuity and storylines and good characters. No way. Yes, yeah, so I'm okay. like, oh, that doesn't surprise me. Um Danner served as supervising director in CG animated Muppet Baby series. Yeah, I've seen that. It was only okay. Um <laughs> yeah, let's come on. I'm glad we didn't get there. And then oh, more, let's see. Emmy Award for Outstanding Performer in a Preschool Animated Program for playing Kermit, Rolf, Mr. Waldorf, Beaker, and Chef on Muppet Babies. So also does a lot of voice work himself, okay. which also just final selling point if you want to watch The Legend of the Three Caballeros. Um, the like the main villain is voiced by Wayne Knight, who is Newman on um, Newman. Newman on Seinfeld. And then Zandra, the warrior princess, is voiced by Grey Delise, who is Azula on uh avatar the lost airbender no way yes so and i mean she's playing ex- effectively the same character it's just out of touch warrior princess except this time she's a good guy okay yeah okay yep. very cool <clears throat> uh it's always interesting to me as well like when you enter that that world of like voice acting where there's like an orbit that you could exist within yeah uh but i've thought about it even more because addison has all of these like little toys that like you know if you press a like a, a button in the kitchen like for like a blender it will like sing a song about cooking meals in yeah. the kitchen mm-hmm. and i'm like it was someone's job to go to a studio i think about that all the time to record the song that this toy yes does and mm-hmm. it's like like somebody could be like a very successful you know 
uh, like music producer, and that's what they do. They are the voice of kids' toys. Oh my gosh, we were um, staying at Disney World one time, and when you get in the elevators and you would like push the floor, like Mickey Mouse would be like fourth floor, and it'd be like someone had to go record Mickey saying the names of the floors, and then someone had to install that into this elevator. Yes, like, who, yeah. like so much effort went into you hearing him say that right now. It's it's the little things. I know, and it is like this tiny little thing. It's like who did that? Is it this, yeah, like you just have one guy? I mean, probably it is like one guy who does all the Mickey. Yeah. So here, I guess if you have the Mickey gig, you're doing pretty good. Let, let me ask yeah. you a question. Let me ask you a question. Do you, do you feel as though you should give thanks to the person? Do you see what I'm oh, saying? I see, I see, see what I'm saying. Okay. Should, should you give here. thanks to the person who who went through that extra effort? Um, <laughs> because you have you have a note, and we talked about this just a little bit before um, the show started, because I was very curious as to like the direction you were going for or, or, or like what you meant by this particular note in the show notes coming into today. Uh, and what you wrote down was, does your experience demand a reaction? Right. So like as like the small setup, the idea here would be like, if you go into the elevator at Disney World, you press the fourth floor button, you hear Mickey say, the fourth floor. And then you're like, someone needs to be thanked for that. Someone needs to be thanked for that. Yes. I don't know who, I don't know how, but like, I need to let someone know great work. Acknowledgement needs to be ha- had. Yes. Yeah, and you had an experience. Yes. And so uh, the, the base example, I'll, I'll try to set you up here, that you gave me was that you heard a speaker and the, what they had said was basically like, if you were to go to like a meal at like a friend's house or they were hosting like a dinner party and everybody ate the food and nobody said anything about the food that the host themselves cooked right and it's like i thought that example actually did stand out to me because i was like that would seem like if i was hosting a dinner and i had like made this like elaborate spread or like you know like cooked my best dishes or whatever and i was excited to showcase them for my friends and no one said anything about the food it would be like did i miss like right yeah did did i do something surprising yeah Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. um and so i I, it's like presentation right yeah Yeah. it's like like, was it not good was it just mediocre like did did it like did it not register you know like was it so so vanilla that like basically it was neither good nor bad it was basically like we i I provided sustenance right you know yeah (laughs) um and you know it'd be like it'd be like having like a glass of water you know like how how frequently do you take a glass like a, like a sip of water that's good water that is good you know, like, so like, watery like, so watery water defines the middle ground yeah. of like of taste it's yes. like it is <clears throat> water is um so anyway i think that uh sort of where where you were going with this was potentially like like taking in a movie and sort of imagining that like dinner party example yeah and it's like you walk out of the movie like should your thoughts be expressed to, to the creator right yeah like to the artist yeah involved. to the artist involved yeah so for yeah and it was so i'll give you the 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 greater background on my um uh, hearing this phrase at all it was like it was at church and there was like a guest speaker and his, this was that was what went up on the board it says your experience demand a reaction and i was like that sounds like such a ben carlin popcorn culture topic that like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I did see it in the notes and i was like no i like this i, know, I, I like knew, this I, I was there last week and you didn't say anything i was like oh, surprising that sounds like such a ben thing <laughs> it and demanded a reaction it demanded exactly ben no uh and so at at church and it's possible i'm getting i get bored at church sometimes so it's possible i got not getting the exact read but my recollection was that like the point of his sermon was that like you know if if god created earth and you humans are experiencing earth then it that demands a reaction in the form of like prayer or worship or whatever sure you know whatever and so i was like now how granular is this message need to be (laughs) right like you know is this just like a encouragement to like pray or is it like applicable to all situations like does that mean like if i go see a movie i if i go see avatar should i be like tweeting my response like to james cameron because he made the movie and i've had the experience should do you know does my experience watching the movie demand a reaction to the creator right you know like because like i can do that <laughs> you know you can just go tweet at them right it's like, right like should i be then or is it like or how yeah how direct like i guess that was that was my question does your experience demand a reaction in every situation or are there like steps removed or how granular do you think you need to be I, in this regard right and i know and i i thought about it like through through a few different like examples that i could think of all at once because like it, it's like there's a part of me that almost feels like 
you know, if every single person adopted this mentality and every single person all the time and always expressed their opinions to the creator, that like you, the creator, would become just otherwise inundated with like yeah, like clearly it's unreasonable for everyone who sees Avatar to tell James Cameron how they feel about how, it. how they feel yeah. about it. And the other <clears throat> thing for me is like as someone who gets feedback on things that we do, I am also incredibly aware of the um, impact that negative comments have uh, in a way that is weighted so much more significantly than positive comments. Right. uh, Which is very unfortunate, like part of like, I think the human condition, but you're so much more worried that like the person who said something negative has so much more, like they see it for how it truly is. Like their ability to criticize makes them like probably more right somehow. Like they see a bigger picture. They can, they like saw through you, Mm -hmm. you know? And so like, there's the part of me, it's like, I don't know if I would want every single person to let me know how they felt all the time, because I know the ones that would rise to the top. And I know the ones that would give me the feels. And unfortunately it's not always the positive ones. Um, but so I thought about it from like a few different like perspectives because, um, what, like one of them is, uh, like receiving like it's sort of the end of the year or it was the end of the year now start of the year. But like over the past month and a half, I've been receiving like Christmas cards in uh, the mail from like friends yeah. and family members mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And like, you know, you receive it. And like a lot of times, like I have this moment with this gesture from this person where like, you know, let's say I like received y'all's and I, you know, it's like, I, I go out there, like I'm flipping through the mail and it's like, Oh, cool. You know, I open it up and I'm like, what a great photo. Like, this is really like, they look so happy and healthy. And you know, like, it's great to see like, you know, the family, like another year later, like grew, like growing up. Yeah. Um, and, and all the rest. And so like a lot of these come from friends. Of course I see your family quite frequently, but like lots of my friends and, and stuff have like moved away and I still received, you know, the card and it's great to like get that like little update. Yeah. Like, a little you know, touch. Like, like what, what does everybody look like now? And so I have a very positive reaction every time I receive one, but then I'm always like, should I like message the person or, or like the thought has even crossed my mind before. Like I should send a thank you card for the Christmas, Christmas card. card. Um, and, and I think that's sort of like what led me to this thought of like, I have had people send me a thank you card after like a, like let's say a birthday party for a child or something like that, gave them a gift. They sent me a thank you card and I'm like, I should send them a thank you card for that. Thank you card. Yeah. And it's like, Nope. <sighs> but like, but it's the same sort of like, yeah, premise, I, do see, I feel yeah. like, yeah, it's like, it's like this made me feel good that you sent me this thing. And it like, it does. I almost feel demand a reaction like i want to let you know like i received your thank you card it made me feel good yeah <laughs> but like you know they were sending me the thank you because i did something that made them feel good and right. then it's almost this like at some point in time it's like well thank you for the thank you thank you for the thank you for the thank you right thank you for the thank you for the thank you yeah <laughs> it's like yeah i do yeah that this is the thing it's like what i i've i've had this cycle before or i've thought about that that particular cycle before and the answer is that thank you cards are periods like they are yes yes that's it's a very good point <clears throat> yeah I, I think you're you're absolutely correct like i'm i'm not trying to like advocate for <clears throat> uh for thank you for thank you cards or anything yeah, like that but thank you for thank you. <laughs> um the when, when you pose this question it was interesting because i had had yeah this exact experience like where where i could like you know I, I'd, I'd open a photo from our friend trey and i'd be like man this is like so cool to see how Trey's family's doing, you know? And it's like, it's like, I want to let them know. Um, and, and I mean, obviously nobody's ever going to be upset, you know, if you like send them a picture and you're like, Hey, I got your, got your card in the mail. Just, you know, like, right. And maybe that's like the great thing about it is that like the, the texting a photo was a very, very like low stakes, yeah. low lift version of just like, like thinking about you or yeah. I got it, you know, yeah. re- received smiley yeah. face. <laughs> I think it's yeah, Christmas cards are tricky because it feels like the, the assumed, like reaction is the the reception of their Christmas card in return. Yeah, like the, you know, like right. it's like that's the like oh yeah, like we exchange Christmas cards. Right, that's that. Like, right, and um, like I guess if you if you do Christmas cards, and then if uh, and then like I feel like if 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 I if I had an in person contact with someone after receiving it i'd be like we got your christmas card yes you also true. great yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's also true that's yeah right. so i try to be i try to be good about that try to like yeah try to like remember like the thing and i do hang them on my wall and i do yeah. look at them and appreciate them and everything so. i do although this is i don't know if you have this one do you get christmas cards from people alice knows that you don't no no 
I don't think so. No. Okay. I don't. I think I think our friend group has overlapped so much that I don't think that there's anybody outside of that. Do you have? I assume there, you have that. This is why you're. This asking. is why I'm asking. Yeah, because yeah. there there will be people like you know like Beth's coworkers from when she worked at you know uh, when she was a teacher you know five years ago. Yes. And it's like. That you know, they both work there at the same time and they were friends, and now both of them, neither of them work at the school anymore. But because the way you do Christmas cards is you have a list of people and you just write uh, you write all their addresses down every year, and like that, that's it, right? So it's like, yes, there are co workers of like old, yeah, like old co workers or something like that who will get a Christmas card from them, and it'll be like, oh, yeah, this is them, I used to work with them, and I'm like great and i have no idea who they are you know i like at the kids and i'm like these children are unfamiliar to me i guess you're on my wall now um, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's true it's true it, it's it's <laughs> I, I think that the the protocol you know is at least at least like the month or so of, yeah. of december mm-hmm. so oh i had to, I, someone uh, gave me a good like um the uh, solution for christmas cards okay if you will which is like because they're, they're always like so nice and it's like what like when do you take them down and then what do you do with them like do you just trash yours when you're done i think that probably alice, i think maybe. alice has a um like a shoe box or like a like a, a box that a gift came in at some point in time that she like stores them in so we, we probably have all of them that we've received like in a container yeah um i i can tell you that that container does not get open yeah more frequently than the end of the year when the next stack goes into them right um so i, I can't i can't claim that i like I, I occasionally go and just like sit down on the couch just like flip through christmas cards just, just flip through them <laughs> see, see, see how much everybody's That's grown th- that is the thing is that like ex- this is this is exactly the problem with something like a christmas card it's like it feels more personal because it's like a picture of someone's family and it's like you feel like you should save them but then also so you are never going to look at them again. There, there is probably you know, some, it's some like, truth to that, right? Yeah. Like, but it feels bad to throw away the stack of family photo of your friend, all all of your friends' family photos at the same time. <laughs> right, that's you know? true too. It, I, it's okay, and I will also say that, like, I feel like I had a greater level of sentimentality towards them this year because I haven't been on social media since May. Oh yeah, and so like for me, for a lot of these, it was like I cannot believe how much bigger your kids are. That is that like, is an interesting thing too. You're right because it's seems like Christmas cards were a great solution to yes. not having social media once upon a time. And I could see I could see this being like a tradition that has lived on in spite of the fact that we like regularly provide Christmas cards to people for, through social media all, all the, the time. time. Yeah, it's like how often are you posting like a new picture of like your of your child, of your dog, of your outings, of your adventures, you know? Yeah. It's like like the Christmas card used to be the opportunity to like tell that story show the update yeah i can even i uh, i almost imagine christmas cards used to have like more of an update on them it Could wouldn't be. surprise me i wrote like, an update here's on some behind. highlights of our of our family this year yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's true I that's super that. true that's that. super true yeah. um or so. i get some some people are still very old-fashioned and it's like it won't be i guess the the trend these days is like a photo of your family or yourself or you you and your significant other right or whatever um but sometimes I'll get like ones that are just it's just like a, it's just like a, a card of just just a card with writing inside. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And it's always like this. It's interesting because these took it took so much more effort and it's so much more personal in that way because they had to like think about you and write those things down. But then when you put that on the wall, it like doesn't stand out nearly as much as like. As, all the actual pictures people as the took. photos i know it's very yeah. interesting um our alice is one of alice's close friends owns a print shop and so she like prints her own oh, which is really cool that's but, cool but she does she does do um like a, like they're beautiful like like even like the card stock and everything you're always like is it a nice vellum <laughs> yeah <laughs> a creamy vellum mm. um no it's uh yeah it's always it's always like very 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 nice but you're absolutely correct alex she'll like you know uh, write like a like a note with like a story and like a memory and everything thing and it's like oh man like this is this is very thoughtful That's but, nice. but I, I understand what you're saying too because you have like the whole like <coughs> wall that you like stick them on and everything yeah. and you know it's it, it is it's harder at a glance especially if you're like at someone's house to be like who wrote you that handwritten note right yeah versus like who's the blonde people right <laughs> <laughs> exactly anyway my the the solution i heard was to get like a um like a key ring and then just like punch a hole in the top of every room and then like have a key ring like for the year and like 
put your own on top and it's like great that was it's like a, having like a little yearbook of them i love that yeah i love that that's a really good idea yeah that's a really good idea. okay right. good, good opportunity to use a hole punch too Exa- oh, right <laughs> you know got to bust it out there's fewer and fewer opportunities these days i know i know <sighs> i always wanted like a custom hole punch as a kid like it yeah. was like a star or something something yeah. different something right from the yeah, something really crazy kind of yeah. i had like one that was like really tiny that it had holes in it itself so you could put it in your binder oh. so that like when your teacher passed out you know stuff that didn't have holes in it you could be like <laughs> hole punch yourself the best i know the best taking yeah. taking taking responsibility into your own hands yeah of course it was like not super effective you had to like line it up and then like really push down on all three spots right like, it was like yeah. more than like three sheets of paper it's yeah. like well this is not working and then it's like yeah okay you got the holes in there but can you get the hole can you get the piece of paper off the holes yes. <laughs> without uh Without ripping it, and Man, the answer I'm, was sometimes. I'm going back now. I'm, I'm having such recollections about just fond, fond binder memories. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> binder organization tactics. Right. Yeah. How are you going to do it? Did you have the little dividers with the little little color things, and you put the labels in there. Yeah. Going across there, have like the plastic sheets. The pl- yeah. So yeah, then yeah. it's like pre-hole punch. Doesn't matter. I already got it. But then you have to like pull it out of the plastic sheet every time. It always seemed like everyone else had it figured out better than you did. Is how it I did remember. always feel yeah. that way. Yes. Whatever their always, organization. It, it, it's like, method oh, was. Man, you have the one with the zipper on the edges. That's oh yeah, yeah, the trapper keepers. The tra- oh, yeah, the oh tra- man, that was like yeah. I don't know. the trapper keeper. You're like mm, that seems so good. But then like I w- I remember having one at one point. Like telling mom like mom, I want the trapper keeper. It's and it was make, like it's but ultimately now yeah. I think I ended up with like two because like the one there was like one that like could only fit like realistically like three subjects in it. Yeah. And then it was like, you know, I got to have a second one here. And then, you know, you get, I don't know, whatever. Not I don't really know if this story. is like a common thing, but I, I had like the, the, like I would just mutilate all of my folders and binders yeah. as the year went on. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I was really bad about like going and like picking all of the edges or like I would take like a, like a sharpened pencil and like, it was like a, like a pleather material on the exterior of a lot of my binders. And I would just like sort of like jab it through. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. my gosh. I totally know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like by the end, all the cardboard is showing and you're like drawing on the cardboard. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah. Or because they, yeah, the corners get nicked and then it's just like, no, nah, I can't not rip this. I, I, I need, nah, I, need I need to tear is, it apart. Yeah, you have all these nervous ticks sitting in class. Like this is so boring. Oh my Man. Goodness. Okay. Here's a weird question. <clears throat> this is like one of those things that, like I, I felt a tremendous amount of shame about oh. from from oh. no one like no one instructed me to feel bad about this uh it was never a thing i've never even heard of another person doing it oh wow um, i'm so excited i know i boy and it's not even that crazy it's not even that crazy we'll see but like as a as a child i remember like in class like yeah i would have um like i almost needed like something to like play with you know and so and so like frequently i would i would like doodle or i would like pick apart like my my folders or whatever but the other thing that i would do is like where your t-shirt seams are like where like the the sleeve attaches to like the the main part of the shirt okay yeah um i would like i would like reach like inside of my sleeve and like try to find like where they had like knotted the t-shirt off like with the threads and i would like find the knots and then basically like pull them out oh but frequently what this would do is just like create a hole in your t-shirt it would create a hole in my t-shirt so i would like I, you know I, i'd be in class and i'd be i it was like aware of the fact that was like i shouldn't be doing this like i shouldn't be pulling on these like, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm i'm ruining my t-shirts right now but it's like but it, you know it's like your boredom or like just like the need to to do something or whatever and so i would do it like now i'm sure if you've ever like watched the pop like i'll play with my beard a lot like, mm-hmm. it's, like it's the same it's like the same compulsion that like has never left me to this day um but so i remember i would go through and i would like pull and like i, w- I always knew like like different t-shirts were in different levels of like disrepair yeah and so it was like like, like oh. i was like i've already really messed this shirt up so like i need to be especially careful today about like which knots i pull because or like maybe i need to like work on like the seam where it's like folded across like the center because it's like i can't I can't damage it too badly. Otherwise, like it, like someone will notice that I'm right. doing this. And at some point in time, it got to the point where I had like damaged them so badly that I would go and I would find mom's um, like she had like a like a like a knitting box. Yeah. Like or a sewing a, kit. A sewing kit. Yeah. And it was I remember it was this like very um, it was like a wicker basket with like all this like ornamental threading on top and stuff like that. And I would go through and I would find thread and I would find needle, you know, and this, this all happened before we moved to cave spring. So I would have been, 
uh, less than 11 years old okay. at, at most. Um, and I would go through and I would like thread the needle. And I, I mean, I don't even know why it never occurred to me because mom had a bunch of different colors of thread, but I would never even like pick a matching color of thread. Yeah. So I'd have like a navy blue t-shirt. I would turn it inside out. I would find the thing. I would thread like white thread and then like thread it back together. Wow. And try to like, I would try to like No idea fix you were shirt. doing this. Yes. Did it work? Could you do it? Yeah, I did it. Like I did it a bunch of times. Wow. Um, yeah, and it was this like. Did mom know you were doing this? Well, that's the thing I've thought about. It's like I've I've always been curious if mom ever figured <clears throat> out that like that's why like a random green shirt would have like red thread, or my blue shirt had white thread, or a white shirt had green thread, or like like uh-huh. like it's really weird that all of Ben's shirts have like the wrong color threading and of course like i was terrible at it yeah like, it was very like you Probably know like a little bunched up over there or something yeah yeah, very, yeah exactly <laughs> like it was it was like it was not well done like, yeah with a sewing machine uh or anything like that but um i don't it was just like it was and so i've always been curious like is did i did i stumble into like my own sort of like weird like like picking habit or something sure. um versus you know, inevitably, I'm sure other people had other things, but I, I've always been curious. Like, did anyone else land on this, or was this just me? Oh, I, I'm, I feel quite certain other people have landed on that. I can tell you that I also, I mean, I've had like the same picking habit for my entire life, which is with like the hangnails around like my cuticles on my fingers, yeah, and especially on my thumbs. I would just like nervously pick at them, and like I cannot tell you how much I can't. I don't even notice it. You know, oh, like yeah, like it's right. like. I will, I mean, I look down and I can notice like the damage I have done to like the, the sides of my fingers and stuff. And I'll be like, I should stop. I should stop doing that. Right. Like, but I can like literally be thinking, I'll be like, be like driving something and I'll like catch myself and be like, all right, try not to do it. Like focus on not doing that. And it'll be like 30 seconds will go by and you'd be like, okay, great. And like the moment you're like, my mind wanders away from it, I'll just be like, I like notice like man I'm doing it just again. doing it again it's just like I can't even like it's like I I've tried to stop it a, a bunch of times I've been like semi successful sometimes but it's like it's it's I don't know it's like one of those habits that yeah now now thinking about it, it's like you have been doing this since like bef- like middle school maybe even elementary school and it's like Whoa. it is like it is just a habit that is like it is it is part of me. I'm not sure my brain can unlearn it. Right. In it's a like, way. It's, it's very like, ingrained. Yeah. Well, and it's probably so um like not it's probably so not in your way. Yeah. Um that it's like, you know, it's it's not necessarily like uh well at least I mean I'm not I'm not a hand expert, but like directly damaging like your health or anything like that. So it's probably the type of thing where it's like there's never been quite the the wall the reason to where it's like yeah i need to fix it yeah like, it's been like i mean certainly i think at times there have been certain times where it's been like very like like noticeably like i'm like what's wrong with your thumb or something you oh know? sure sure yeah i will say i felt there was i do have one little i mean i don't i wish i just didn't do it it's like mm, it's, it's frustrating to me but sure. i don't know what i can do about it but i will say there was one point in high school where i sometimes i would feel bad about this and i don't even know if it's still true today but um, there was a girl I was going out with and she like noticed like, yeah, my like my hands. She was like, what's happening? There? I was like, oh, sorry, this is just like a bad habit. I just like pick at my hangnails or whatever. Right. And like she was like, oh, I've never like heard of that before. I've never seen that before or whatever. And like she you know, didn't like judge it or anything, but she had like clearly never seen seen it and then like for the rest of the time i knew her uh she started doing it oh and, man like yeah like it like it, it, like it like her brain like unlocks i'm like this is a potential nervous tick you could adopt do you think you think we should <laughs> <laughs> it was like yep yep <laughs> i was like oh no i'm so sorry <laughs> count me on board yeah Oh man. Okay. So, so yeah, here uh, I am thinking this, this conversation is going to be incredibly productive for the people out there. With, oh gosh, what if I just did it on mass? I know. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Please don't pick your hangnails. No. Yeah. I I had a very <clears throat> similar one with uh with that um where I would I would take my thumb on my left hand and I would make like a like almost like a new oh like, yeah I see like, what you're doing yeah, yeah. like and squeezing your thumb between your middle and um like index finger, finger. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly and what I would do is I would squeeze down and it would be like the the bottom part is that the, the cuticle yeah like, like the the skin that like surrounds your nail and yeah. so i would press down like right on the bottom of it and i did this it was probably for like a year of my life and that would that like became like the nervous take for a while and um 
what it would do. And it was the strangest thing ever. And actually, if you like, if you look at my thumbs, like straight on, you can still see mm -hmm. like where this like one thumb is just like, it's like kind of like twisty bent. Oh, I do see It's it. like yeah. one of them is like perfectly like round and smooth. And the other <laughs> one is kind of like, 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 like you just like permanently dented your nail bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Whoops. Um, but for the longest time, what would happen was, I guess I was doing so much damage to like where the nail is like, like manufactured inside of like the end of your finger that like, it would literally send like a, like a hole through the middle of my nail. So there would be like, literally like, if you were like, look at the top of the smooth part of my nail, there'd be like a hole right in the middle of it. Wow. And it was like, that is so unusual. That is a weird one. I could Man. never figure out like what was causing it for the longest yeah. time that yeah, I was like, like, Oh, it's me. Oh, I'm like, I'm like damaging like the, the like, thumb, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. That's a weird one. Yeah. The, uh, the, this is the, the only thing it's, it's weird what like you like normalize about your own bad habits. Yes. Cause like the one thing that's happened to like my, um, but yeah, my finger sometimes is like, like or over the course of doing this my whole life, every now and then you'll like pull off a hangnail or something that uh, will start bleeding. Yes. And like, you know, after it's happened to you enough, like you don't even notice it. Like you can just like cover it up or like wrap it up or like squeeze it in your hand or something. And it's just like, yeah, it'll stop bleeding or whatever. No big deal. But like, but like, it's like the sight of the blood there does nothing. You know, it's like, it means nothing to me. But the number of times people in my life have been like, are you bleeding? And I'll be like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, <laughs> oh, you're right. Blood on your hands, probably worth addressing. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Yeah. That, I, you're, you're absolutely correct though. Yeah. It definitely becomes one of those things where you just start to realize like, Hmm. I've been doing this for such a, such a long time. Such a long time. Such a long time. Luke has a Berenstein Bear book about bad habits, and it's about a uh, sister bear biting her nails. Do, and do like, they, do they tape the fingernails? They tape the fit. Well, that's like their um a, their first solution, which does not work. Oh, okay. Because okay. the tape is then too embarrassing for sister and all the other kids. No, she's a nail biter, and then they make fun of her for nail biting, and what? she's like, "No, thank you." And then I, she goes back to biting. I always remember that one. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so eventually it's like I feel like I feel like with that one in particular, Stan and Jan Berenstain there had like they were like, We thought of a clever solution and I really want to tell everyone that I was so clever about it. Yeah. And but like they're so at first they then they try bribing system like if you don't bite your nails, we'll give you a dime, then that doesn't work because it's like too much it's like mm, well, if you mess up at all, too bad. No dime. Okay. So gotcha, instead gotcha. they give her ten pennies at the beginning of the day and she gets to keep a penny per nail not bit. Oh. And so because the pennies are in her pocket and she can hear them jingling, she doesn't bite her nails. Wow. Yeah. Pretty clever. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, so much to be learned. I'm, I'm actually like... So much like, to be learned. I feel like I am very quietly excited for the era of like Addie's life where she starts to like read these like very foundational like like learning moments. Yeah. You know, where it's like you start to like you're taught like the like the most basic of like like morals or yeah you know good behaviors or whatever uh but also even beyond that like i remember as a kid always thinking like that that tv show like are you smarter than a fifth grader it was like i remember it came out i think like well I, in my memory it came out like around when i was a fifth grader oh. and it was another one of those like truman show moments yeah. where it was like kind of interesting that it happened right when i was in fifth grade but okay right, okay whatever, whatever. Yeah. um it could have not been i i can't i honestly can't remember what it was but i remember when it first came out thinking like <coughs> obviously like obviously obviously these adults are smarter than a fifth grader like how is this even up for question right but then like you know the further you get from like elementary school education like where you're learning a lot about like the history of your state or the country or like you right. know varying bits of like the constitution the preamble like all these little things or even like in math class like how to solve algebra problems and stuff like that it's like when you're in the midst of doing it you're like being trained how it works all the associated rules and like being like consistently quizzed and tested and given like assignments to know how to do exactly. it exactly yeah. and so it's like then when you sort of like zoom back and it's been 20 years since I've been, you know, in fifth grade, it is the case where you're like, I don't remember like and it hasn't come up, you know, like right, exa uh, that's the thing. It's like when you're when you're there, the things you're being tested on and quizzed on are like all these specific details like this is the year Jamestown was founded. And it's like as an adult, the exact year doesn't really affect your day to day life. It's probably good that you know that 
you know, Jamestown was founded. Right. You know, yes. and like that's where things started. But like the, the specific dates don't really matter as long as you're generally aware of the basic history. Right. Whereas the fifth graders, that stuff does matter to them because it's what they're being quizzed on. So in that way, they are smarter than you. But it's like a it's the interpretation of the word smarter. Yes. You know. Yeah. Well, so but what I'm curious about, though, is like now I've probably gotten far enough away from like the opportunity to like really take the time or, you know, commit to attempting to learn these things again. And I've been like, I'm very curious if um, like as I'm helping Addison with homework as she gets older, if I will like learn them again and actually see much more of like the real world application for fifth grade knowledge Uh. and almost become like, have like a wider view. Yeah. You know, it's like, as like a, as like potentially like a, you know, a 40 year old, it'll be like, Oh, Mm. I kind of get it now. I can see where this is like useful information to know. And I have not thought about it since I was like 10. Yeah. I can see that. I can see it. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I am curious about that as well to see uh, how, uh, how you'll like how how much how helpful I will be for like my kids homework stuff or if you'll remember it or if you'll have to like basically relearn it on the fly and then I, I have frequently yeah. thought that like yeah like she'll come home and I'm like okay I'm going to read the whole textbook like so that when you have questions I will know how to answer them. Oh my gosh, that sounds like quite a quite an undertaking, Ben. <laughs> I, I mean, it potentially could be in my mind the textbooks are not as long as they felt like they were at the time mm. but maybe they were exceptionally long I, yeah i mean it's it's probably a little little column a little column b if you're gonna read the whole thing that's gonna be um an endeavor you'll probably learn a lot you know i know textbook. yeah how yeah. about that well, you know so look forward to now the the episode of of popcorn culture like 1433 where yeah. where ben explains dependent clauses there you go all right (laughs) what do those things do can't wait i know it's gonna be awesome Mm -hmm. it's gonna be awesome oh man with the 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 other one i always i i'm like ashamed that i can't remember this but there's that that song where you learn all of the states in alphabetical order like oh yeah like nifty 50 united states yeah 13 original colonies and it's like i feel like i can always be like i can get so far into the songs like Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan. And then it's like, no, you forgot. <laughs> I don't remember how all the New Jersey new. Oh, all the news. <laughs> yeah. yeah. New Jersey. Like yeah. North, North, the, North Carolina. All North the news Dakota. and Norths. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and like, Nebraska to round off. Yeah, so, and Nebraska. <laughs> um, but it's it's definitely one of those really funny things because I remember as like learning it in <coughs> like like third or fourth grade or whatever in music class, and I remember the teacher telling us like the best part about this song is is that when my son was a senior in high school, as an extra credit question, it was like I will give you a point for every every one of the states that you can list. And he was able to list all 50 in alphabetical order and he got like full marks or whatever. Ba-boom. And I was like, wow, that will be so useful. Can't wait for that day. Thank goodness I know them all now. Yeah. And then like the further I've got from it, it's like, I don't have it anymore. I don't have it anymore. (laughs) What am I supposed to do? (laughs) Yeah, and it's such a weird thing because it's like, in your brain, obviously, you know all 50 states. Right, yes. You know? like, nobody will ever say a state where I'm like, I have not heard of that <laughs> You're one. like, wait a second, <laughs> Zebraska. <laughs> <laughs> now no. that's now new. That, uh, yeah, you're right. That's a, yeah. No one's naming states you've never heard of. Yes. Um, but at the same time, if someone asked you to make a list of all 50, could you get, could you independently just generate all 50 at once i know that's that's the challenge that's the challenge yeah i've always felt like the having the song to back it up was always so helpful yeah because it like it gave you it like it's like anything else if you put something to to song then you can usually like remember it because you can remember like the jingle you can remember the right like it sounds or like you know oh like what comes next or whatever the thing this is such a weird one because it's like i it's clearly something you've thought about a lot and it's like it, it is not hard to look up the answer and just oh, like true. rememorize it. But like, it feels like the sort of thing where you're like, no, 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 no. If I can't remember it 
You're on exa- my own, I don't even want to know it. 100% correct. Yeah. 100% correct. Yeah. It's like I could easily just go yeah. and spend like less than 15 minutes probably perusing an alphabetical list of the United States and remembering the tune of the song. You and think, you think and, that's out there? And, I, and I'll be fine. You could probably go on YouTube and get the song itself. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I, I, I'm not going <clears> to lie to you. I have looked up the song itself before because I've been mm. curious if I remember the tune oh. correctly. Mm-hmm. And I do feel like it's mm-hmm. sung mm-hmm. slightly differently than yeah. the way that I did it just now yeah um which is which is jarring yeah it's like man how, how was my memory from okay from this is a grade? weird one not perfect so in in uh i don't know what it was maybe maybe my senior year of high school i think i took like psychology or something because i was like that sounds fun and probably like an easy a and one of the things um we had to do in that class was um she like it was just like without without thinking about it she's like set a timer for like 30 or maybe like 20 seconds or something it was like see if you can write the alphabet backwards and just like just go oh yeah you yeah, know? yeah yeah and then she'd be like all right all right get a new sheet of paper com- completely clean sheet of paper and she would t- set the timer again and it was like amazing how like the entire class like the third round could do it but like no one could do it in the first time oh interesting yeah and it was like like you quickly develop the memory for like the order of the alphabet backwards but like just to like think about it in order the first time was like hard right well and that's it's it's strange like i very frequently feel this exact problem like when i'm dealing with um like trivia, like when we do like the J versus Ben's or like Harry Potter stuff or whatever, like I will find, and this is why I always like, I go to like that, that example of like my brain desk where it's like, I don't, it's not organized. Like the information is not like well laid out in my brain. I don't always think because I was never learning it or being taught it in a way that was supposed to lay it out neatly. It was just like certain things stood out to me for certain reasons and other things like just faded into the background for certain reasons. Um, but like, you know, I, I, it's like, I've obviously read the book so many times, like we've studied them so aggressively. We've made hundreds of videos and theories about them and stuff. It's like, at this point, it feels like you should pretty much know every like nook and cranny detail. And it's like, I still don't. Right. Um, but very often I will find that like, if we're writing a theory, it's like, oh, I know that person's name from, from the St. Mungo's ward. Yeah. Like, I like, yeah, like I, I, like I know them because I'm approaching it. You're using that information like very actively. Yes. I'm using yeah. it actively and I'm able to like like go after it in a way that makes sense and it's almost like knowing the alphabet in the correct order it's like i i like i know the alphabet like it's not like that's an issue but if you were like what's the th- like the 23rd letter it's like it, it doesn't immediately it's not sorted in my oh my brain. gosh do you want to hear a secret shame is that like even even as an adult if i have to like alphabetize something i'll be like oh and I'm, uh, oh yeah, yeah same here yeah yeah, I'm, yeah I'm not just like if you were just like what comes like what comes first t or m i'd be like <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to think about it. <laughs> Give me a minute. Oh, yeah. Give me a minute. The, I think the the biggest thing that has always helped me is that uh, um, so brothers' names is Jonathan and Tyler, and your J is the tenth letter of the alphabet, and yeah. T is the twentieth. Yeah. And so for the most part, that is like about as much categorization as I've given the alphabet <laughs> in terms of like numeric attachment. Yeah. And I'm like that comes after T, so it's got to be at least. Right, like obviously there's A, B, C, and D. Those are the first four. That's easy. And X, Y, Z are the last three. That's great. And then I've got J and T right there, no problem. So that's basically like half the alphabet. The rest, uh, whatever. You fill in as needed. Fill in as needed. Yeah, It'll be fine. Um, yeah. So that's that's. It's especially like the um, <laughs> E You're F doing, G yeah. H I E yeah. F G H E F G H. I would say are the ones that I have the hardest time remembering. Which it is order so funny. Come in. You say that because like you're talking about like the tune and stuff. This is what made me think of the alphabet. Is that like the way I, I was like this is such a cool skill like i could do i was like this will become in handy if i ever get pulled over for like a sobriety test or something and i can do the alphabet backwards now oh yeah right yeah right. but it's like yeah zyx bbut srqp o number k g h or yeah it's like i get to there and then i lose the tune <laughs> yeah. oh right right and it's like now i'm yeah. not yeah. sure. j i h g f b d c b a yeah i'm just like eh, I, I can do the rest but yeah but like yeah so same same exact thing it's like this is probably not something that would take you a tremendous amount of time to learn and it'd be like a fun party trick or like yeah like the, yeah. it's like a very famous like sobriety check thing like can you do the alphabet backwards that, that is such a dumb sobriety check thing though because like most people can't do it <laughs> yeah like stone yeah. cold like while i'm sitting here thinking about doing it yeah. i can get to zyx yeah you know before i'm like hold on let me let me what happens first v u or w <laughs> like, yeah exactly yeah <laughs> like uh so it, it is definitely um it, it's a very challenging 
request. Yeah, uh, I feel. But yeah, it's it's like it, it it just doesn't come up that often either. Like it's it, maybe this is like one of those things, or or it'd be even curious to know like if you did learn it like inside out, backwards, forwards, middle, you know front middle back yeah. type of thing like if you knew it in every single different direction you knew the the exact number associated with each letter of the alphabet like on command and stuff like that um which i i realize as i'm saying all this this is not complicated stuff it's it'd probably be very easy to learn very fast if you tried it'd be like applicably what would it change about your life like yeah. w- would you even find like things do make more sense they literally make more sense oh like, right i doubt know? that yeah. yeah like that is interesting it's, it's i mean it's the same thing with the states it's like like you don't i don't have to alphabetize things ever you know and it's like and if you did of course you would you would you would know it's like but it's like no one thinks you don't know the order of the alphabet right they're like i know i know the order of the alphabet i don't have to put that particular bit of knowledge in to use on the regular i can just think about it when i need it (laughs) it'll be fine yeah and then who's gonna think twice about me yeah Uh, yeah (laughs) yeah like, Hello, man, no yeah. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, I feel like we're at a, we're at a good stopping point. People are probably like, yeah, right. guys, alphabet's not like, that hard. Every, not uh, relatable. Exactly. <laughs> like, everyone knows exactly the numbered order. This is the weird thing, too, is that like for some reason, like like even though you know the order of the alphabet, like you would never be in doubt as to whether or not a number was bigger or smaller than another number that is also you know? true that is like, like i for some reason a through z only 26 only 26 numbers but it's like you can never be like like it is eight further away from one or 12 and you'd be like hold on one two three four five six seven eight you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true yeah, no one's gonna do that right right yeah. right oh man yeah yeah what's what's yeah. closer to the letter n is it v or f oh right <laughs> i'm not sure v it's got to be v Right, oh, man. Now I'm not sure. You're right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is like I'm guessing. Like, at like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. No, oh, yeah. maybe it is. <laughs> okay, people are unsubscribing now. I know they're like, like we're you done. guys we're are done. so dumb. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, as ever, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of The Pop. If you have any fantastic feedback for us, and I'm sure you do, you can email it over to popcornculturepod at gmail.com. I do appreciate all of your insight. Or if you'd like to leave a review for the podcast, it certainly helps out a lot in discoverability sources for other folks stumbling across the show. Yeah, so. Yeah. Be sure to go and leave, uh, especially if it's a five star. If it's going to be less than that, maybe maybe reconsider entirely. Oh, yeah. Um, but hey, you know what? Go ahead and leave a five star review. Definitely do that. Yeah, definitely do that. <coughs> definitely do that. Um, otherwise, if you'd like to support the show on Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash popcorn culture. We have a lot of cool perks there, including after the final pop, which is an extra uh, 15 to 20 minutes each week of Jay and I talking about something we just didn't get to in the main show or about something we did get to in the main show. Um, that is available at the $5 tier here at patreon.com slash popcorn culture. Uh, but otherwise, until next time, pop pop.